Hello everyone, today we're going to learn how to compare two groups using SPSS through independent samples t-test. So let us begin. When we say independent samples t-test, this is a statistical treatment that is used to determine whether there are significant differences between scores in two different conditions. And when we say conditions in plain language, we're referring to groups here and the groups can be naturally occurring such as biological sex or it can be experimentally induced or manipulated. So for example, you have a study conducted in a laboratory and then for, you ask one group of people to take a certain medicine while another group of people were not required to take any medicine or perhaps they were given another um, type of medicine. So in, in that case, you have two groups and what you can do to compare the efficacy of the two types of medicine that you administered, you can use independent samples, T-tests. So whenever you are dealing with two groups and whenever you want to determine if there are significant differences between those two groups, you can utilize t-test. But how does independent samples t-test differ compared to dependent samples t-test, which is sometimes referred to as paired samples t-test? Well, to answer that question, independent samples t-test is used if your two groups are independent of one another, meaning a certain participant or respondent is only assigned in a single group. He or she will not be classified in another group or in both groups at a single location. For example, for naturally occurring conditions, a biological male cannot be classified as a biological female at the same time. So if I'm comparing the anxiety levels of male and female, I can just ask them to tick the box to, the, to, to declare their biological sex, whether they are male or female. So in that case, I can use independent samples t-test. But if we are using the same group of respondents to give us two sets of answers or two sets of data, for example, there is a pre-test and a post-test and the two data came from the same respondent or from the same group of people, those are, some in, those are the instances wherein we can use dependent samples. So today we're only going to focus on independent samples t-test and we can discuss dependent samples t-test next time. Okay, so since we are testing for significant difference here, here is my recommended format in writing the hypothesis. First, for the null hypothesis, remember that in the null hypothesis, you declare that there is no effect, that there are no differences, that, the, that your independent variable has no impact or influence on your dependent variable, so in the case of comparative analysis, which in this lecture we are referring to the independent samples t-test, I suggest that you follow this format. So for instance, there's no significant difference in the insert dv between group 1 and group 2. So feel free to change the highlighted text in this slide, or you may also, uh, there are also other ways of delivering the null hypothesis, but this is my personal favorite um, way of delivering the null hypothesis. So for example, maybe you can say there is no significant difference in the antibodies between vaccinated people and unvaccinated people. There's no significant difference in the alertness between those who drink coffee and those who did not drink coffee. So in symbol, that, that would be the mean of group one or condition one is equal to the mean of group two. Okay, alternatively, in the alternative hypothesis, we assume that there is a significant difference between group one and group two. For example, we can say here, there's a significant difference in the antibodies between those who were vaccinated and those who were not vaccinated. Hence, in symbol, that would be the mean of group one is not equal to the mean of group two. Okay, so... How do you determine if there are significant differences between the groups? Well, just like in other statistical analysis and other statistical treatments, what we do is that we compare the p-value with the alpha level. Okay, so for the demonstration, here is my sample problem that we are going to answer today. So 24 people were involved in an experiment to determine whether background noise, such as music, slamming of doors, people making coffee, and others 
affects short-term memory operationally defined as the number of words recalled. Half of the sample were randomly allocated to the noise condition, while half of the sample to the quiet condition. So in this case, perhaps the cognitive psychologist was interested in determining whether noise can affect your recall of words. Okay, so how are we going to state the null hypothesis here? So if I was the researcher, I would do it like this. There is no significant difference in the number of words recalled between the noise group and the quiet group. Or in this case, I use the no noise group. You can also use the quiet condition. While the alternative hypothesis is that there is a significant difference in the number of words recalled between the noise group and the no noise group or the quiet group. Okay, so here are my um, reminders in interpreting the results of the t-test. So just like what I mentioned in other lectures, we compare the p-value of the t-statistic with the declared alpha level and the usual alpha level that we use in behavioral sciences, my field of psychology, is 0 0.05. So in other words, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then it means that there is a significant difference between the two groups. But if the p-value is greater than or, or equal 0 0.05, then there is no significant difference between the two groups. So in plain language, before we go to the demonstration, what does it mean to say that there is no significant difference? So if there are no significant differences between the groups, then it means that perhaps the two groups are equal, they're just the same, or it, it may also mean that there might be a difference between the two groups, but the difference is too small that it is negligible. So that's what it means if the, if the p-value is greater than 0.05. That's, that's what it means if there are no significant differences. It, um, the difference is too small or negligible. In contrast, if the p-value is less than 0.05, then one way to interpret this is that there is a large difference between the two groups. So for example, you were able to prove that those who were vaccinated had more antibodies, had greater immunity levels compared to those who were not vaccinated. So we can expect that the p-value in your analysis would be less than 0 0.05. Anyway, so here are my three steps in interpreting the t-test results. So I recommend that first you look at the T statistic or the value of the T. And then after you check the T statistic, we look next at the P value to determine if it's lower or greater than 0 0.05. And to make sense of the results, you have to check the descriptive statistics, particularly the means alongside the standard deviation values of the two groups.